Hello and welcome to this second part of your first online lecture. Uh, apparently I had not talked about the types of mixtures the first time around, so I wanted to make sure that I fixed that. And uh, we're going to talk about heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures, the two types of mixtures. So heterogeneous and homogeneous. Homo E O U S and so you can tell that these both of these words share um, similar prefixes and a common root. Um, the prefix hetero means different. The prefix homo means same, and the the root gene or genius or genus is a Greek root that means kind. So heterogeneous, literally, if you put the two parts together, it means different kind, and homogeneous means same kind. And what that means for us in chemistry in terms of these mixtures is that if it's a mixture is heterogeneous, it has different parts that you can see. So if you can tell that there are different parts, if you can, um, if you can see or, or tell that there are different parts to the mixture, it's a heterogeneous mixture. And if the, the mixture all looks the same, then it's a homogeneous mixture. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to use some examples here to figure that out. So uh, my first example would be like um, ink, like ink from a pen or ink from a marker. So this is the type of ink that I'm talking about. We've seen we've got a gentleman here who's unfortunately spilled a bunch of it all over the desk. <laughs> you can see it looks uh, like a uniform black liquid. In other words, the, the ink all looks the same. It doesn't matter where you look at the ink. Uh, you could take some of it from here and put it in your pen or some of it from here and you put it in your pen. It would kind of all be the same. But ink is uh, not a compound. It's not just atoms bonded together. It's actually a mixture of compounds. There's the <clears throat> the pigment compound, which is giving the ink its uh, dark black color. And there actually might be a couple. Actually, might be a couple different pigments in there that's that's doing that instead of just one, which would you know go along with being a mixture. Um, plus, then there has to be the liquidy part of of the ink, and that's usually going to be water or some form of alcohol or maybe even a mixture of both of those. So um, ink is a bunch of different things kind of together that you can physically separate. That's how ink works. When you put it down the page, the liquid part evaporates out and it leaves the solid, uh, it leaves the pigment molecules behind on the paper. And it kind of separates, separates that way. So ink, because it all looks the same, <clears throat> but it is a mixture, would be an example of a homogeneous mixture. Ink is homogeneous. Ink is homogeneous. So then what about heterogeneous? Well, this is Italian dressing. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with Italian dressing. There's a lot of dressings that are kind of like it. It's basically a, a mixture of, um, of uh, vinegar and oil and then a whole bunch of spices and seasonings. And when you look at this, uh, when you look at this container of Italian dressing, you can clearly see these. There are little like globs of oil. Even though they've tried to mix it up, there are these little, little globs of oil inside of here that you can see. There are these bits of like pepper and and bits of garlic and stuff that are floating around in here. Um, this is all oil up here at the top that's separated and floated to the top. Whereas the liquid down here is the vinegar. That's the vinegar that you're seeing. And it has, you know, there's little flecks of herbs and spices in here. And, um, and you can see all of these different parts. You can see all of these different bits and pieces of the mixture. And because it has different parts that you can see, that makes Italian dressing a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest difference and these are two really good examples of it. The big difference is, you know, if it if it does if it has a if it's a mixture of different things, if it's a mixture of different compounds or atoms or or whatever, um, but it all looks the same, then it's a homogeneous mixture. If you can't tell that it has different parts, it's a homogeneous mixture. If it's a mixture of different things and you can tell that it has different parts, that's a heterogeneous mixture. 
And I would say that these are probably pretty important because most of the stuff that's around you in everyday life is some form of a mixture. Almost all living things are heterogeneous mixtures or parts of living things are heterogeneous mixtures. If you think about like um, blood, for example, well, let's see, let's, this, is, um, this is a little test tube that's got some blood in it. And you can see there's clearly different two different parts here. You've got um, this kind of clear yellowish part at the top, and that's that's that itself is a is a mixture. Uh, it's called plasma. It's mostly water, but there are other things in it, proteins and stuff that are floating around in it that kind of give it that yellowish yellowish color. And then you see down here, there's it. It almost looks black here, but it's super dark red, and those are the red blood cells. Um, and what's interesting about that is is a lot of times when people think of when people think of blood they just think of this uniformly red fluid but that's not what it is at all and once it's as soon as it starts to sit for even a short amount of time all the red blood cells will start to settle to the bottom and you can clearly see that there are different parts in it now if you took the plasma out and you were just looking at the plasma just the plasma not the blood as a whole thing then the plasma would be a hetero uh, a homogeneous mixture my, my my mistake so this clear yellow liquid that has proteins and, and different things floating around in it that you can't see it all looks the same throughout th that would be a homogeneous mixture if you were just talking about the plasma so blood in its entirety is a heterogeneous mixture but there are it's a mixture of mixtures. So there's a mixture in the blood called plasma that's a homogeneous mixture. So this can actually get this can actually get kind of interesting. It goes it can go kind of deep depending on what you're looking at. So what I would say is, you know, maybe spend a few minutes talking to a friend or or, or thinking or maybe looking on the internet to see if you can find examples of these types of mixtures in everyday life. Can you find some more examples of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture? Like, like uh, what about milk when it comes straight for a co from a cow as opposed to the milk that we buy in jugs? Are those the same or are those different? What about the air that you're breathing right now? What if you went to the ocean and you scooped up a, a cup of water out of the ocean? What would that be? What's the water that comes out of our taps? You know, all of these things, um, all of these things that are around us every day, they're, they're going to be... You know, if they're mixtures, they're going to be one of these two types of mixtures. They're going to be homogeneous or heterogeneous. And um, if if you can if you can do that pretty well, you're probably you're probably ready for that first quiz. So uh, that's going to be the end of this this little explanation of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. As always, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, ask in class.